I can't tell you what to do. I'm not a financial advisor, but maybe you can get some inspiration or get some ideas from what I do. So the first thing is that we have to change our mindset. So instead of focusing on short-term savings, focus on long-term savings. So yeah, it might be cheap to buy some cans at the grocery store right now, but in the long term, are we actually saving money? What about our cat's health? We gotta think about the long-term effects of feeding lower quality foods. Yeah, some cats may live to 20 years, but that isn't the case for all cats. Most cats have some kind of metabolic disease and they're considered a senior even just at 10 years old when they should be living up to 20 and even longer than that. The other great thing about feeding raw is that you buy in bulk and when you buy in bulk, you're more likely to save. For example, when I went to the grocery store, I got a two pound pack of ground beef and it was only about $4.69 per pound. And those are New York prices. So if I can find some cheap beef, I'm sure that you can too. The other thing to keep in mind is that cats don't need to eat as much when they're eating raw food and homemade food. And shout out to Anime Wolf Girl because she commented on this poll and said that she did the math, like actually worked it out. What she was feeding now compared to Darwin's, which is a complete frozen ground raw food. And she found out that Darwin's was actually cheaper. So when you're doing the maths, make sure that you're actually comparing what your cat is currently eating to what he would have to eat on raw. Don't do the comparison with, well, I'm feeding my cat seven ounces of food now, wet canned food, and seven ounces of raw. That's probably not accurate. You're probably gonna feed much less when it comes to raw. So I made this graph for my cat nutrition course and I compared homemade raw, homemade cooked, commercial frozen raw, freeze dried raw, wet and dry food. So with homemade raw and homemade cooked food, we have about the same amount. So we're going to feed a little less than five ounces per day. Interestingly though, with the commercial frozen raw and the freeze dried raw, we would need to feed almost double the amount and we would even get fewer kcal per day. With wet food, it's the same thing. You're feeding almost double the amount and you're actually, interestingly, you're getting 100 extra kcal per day. With dry food, the kcal per ounce is more dense because they make it that way, they make it more palatable, they have to increase all of the nutrients because it's cooked and pressurized. So you would feed a little less than homemade raw and homemade cooked but you're still getting more kcal per day. And most of those kcal per day are coming from carbohydrates. So, and especially with wet food too. So with wet food and dry food, you're getting more nutrients, but it's not nutrients that your cat can readily use, like carbohydrates, fiber. They don't really need that stuff. Their, their diet is high protein, meat-based protein, very important, and moderate fat, again, animal fat. So let's take a look at some real life examples with a, the one of the worst wet cat food brands and a homemade cat food premix. Homemade cat food premixes, that's the easiest way to get started on homemade because you use the premix and the ingredients on the bag, that's it. So here we have this wet canned food that says to feed about 10 ounces per day for a 10 pound cat. So you would be spending around $1.46 per day. With this raw food premix, Alnutrin, they recommend feeding four ounces per day, so more than half the amount of canned food, and you would spend $1.94 per day. And I did this math based on the average cost of ground beef, which would be $4.99 according to Google. That's what the average is for the US. So again, with the canned food, you're feeding about $1.46 per day. With this raw food premix, TC Feline, same recommendations, four ounces per day. So you're gonna spend about $1.56 per day. So 10 cents more, which is about $36.50 per year. So we're getting lower. Next raw food homemade premix. We have four ounces per day recommended feeding and the spend is $1.25 per day. So 20 cents cheaper than feeding the, one of the worst wet cat food brands. And so you would save about $76.65 per year. So not massive savings, but you are saving money and it's better quality food as well. So now let's say maybe you're feeding a medium quality wet canned food and we'll take a look at Instinct and Hair Today. Hair Today is kind of a one-stop shop for homemade cat food. They actually have one of the premixes that we just looked at. So for Instinct, this is their duck formula and for Hair Today, this is also their duck ground. So for instinct, it says about seven ounces per day for a 10 pound cat. For hair today, they would say around 3.5 ounces 
per day. So again, we have almost double the amount of feeding for the wet canned food compared to the raw. For instinct, you're, you're going to spend around 60 to 65 cents per ounce. With hair today, 56 cents an ounce. For instinct, you're going to spend $4.08 per day, which equals $1,489 per year. For hair today, $1.79 per day, 654 per year. And that's including the shipping costs. Now, depending on where you live, that shipping cost might be more, but if you're saving $835 per year switching over, you can afford to pay for the shipping. So I encourage you to actually do the maths based on what you're currently feeding and what the raw food premix or the commercial frozen raw actually recommends to feed. Do the maths and see and comment below what you're what you're spending now and what you would spend if it was homemade or commercial frozen raw. You know, prices change depending on the company, depending on where you live, where you buy your ground meat. So again, this is the average. So you'll actually have to do the math based on where you live and where you're going to buy from. The other cool thing about raw pet food suppliers is that they have rewards programs. So when you create an account, you'll earn points. When you make an order, you'll earn points. You can review products, like them on Facebook, share a testimonial, put a picture on the website. You get points for all of that, and then you can exchange those points for dollars off on your next order. So I'm able to get Jericho's raw food for free, completely for free. I got 12 pounds of food from here today a couple weeks ago and it was completely for free. And the other thing that I love about here today is that they let you use the points on the shipping costs as well. Most companies don't let you do that, but surprisingly they let you use it on the shipping costs. So I literally didn't pay anything. It was $82 and some change completely for free because of those discount points. And that $82 and change was about eight weeks of, eight full weeks of food, and I still have a little bit left over that I can use for the next batch. Raw Feeding Miami, that's where I get Jericho's whole prey. They also have a rewards program. Their points work a little differently, so with Hair Today, you can use as many points as you want. With Raw Feeding Miami, they do have it set up with points, but it's a certain amount of points for a certain amount of dollars off. Or if you want to use the link in the description, that's my referral link, you'll get 10% off of your first order, and then I get $15 off. So you can also share your referral link, same with Here Today and Raw Feeding Miami. You can share your referral link with friends and family on Facebook, on Reddit, just Make sure you let people know, hey, this is my referral link. You get a bonus, I get a bonus. And then you get discount points that way. You get dollars off on your order that way. I mentioned Darwin's before. If you're not ready for homemade, you can do a complete frozen raw food with Darwin's. That's easy. They ship it right to your door in little, in little patties. It's easy to portion and serve. You can use the link in the description. That's my affiliate link. And when you tell them about your cat, you can get 10 pounds of raw for just $14.95. So that 10 pounds of raw might last about 40 days. So 15 bucks for 40 days worth of food is definitely worth it. You can try it out without having to spend the full price. And then you'll have some time to transition to the food, see how your cat likes it, and that'll give you enough time and enough food to really, really test to see if your cat likes it. And I have other options in the description for wet food and freeze-dried raw, and there are coupon codes and discount codes, so you can use those links and use my coupon codes so that you can save some money on your first order from them as well. Homemade is definitely going to be the cheapest option because you control the ingredients, you control where you buy those ingredients, and therefore you can shop around for the lowest price. So you can shop around, you can look at your grocery stores, your butcher, the farm. Ideally, you would buy it straight from the farm, but meat at the grocery store is still better than commercial cat food. Just make sure when you're buying these meat ingredients that they're fully frozen and not fully thawed at the grocery store because they sit under those lights and you don't know how long they've been thawed. So there's gonna be surface bacteria on the ground meat that you can't rinse off. Whereas if you're buying full chunks of meat, you can rinse off that surface bacteria. Give me a polydactyl thumbs up if this is helpful so far so that more cat parents that have the same concerns as you can find this video. It genuinely helps me and it really, really supports the work that I do. And it's nice because then other cat parents can find this video and do better for their cat. Thank you very much. So now I, I wanna talk about like how I, how I actually save money and what I spend money on, what I don't spend money on. And again, I can't tell you what to do. I'm not a financial advisor, but 
maybe you can get some inspiration or get some ideas from what I do. Now, it might be a shorter list to actually say what I actually spend money on than compared to what I don't spend money on. So what I do actually spend money on is business expenses. So things like furthering my education, paying for my website hosting, paying for supplies, and I pay rent and I have bills and food and stuff for Jericho. That's basically all I spend my money on. It's just like, the necessities. I also use my credit card as if it's a debit card. So I rack up rewards points and then I cash in those rewards points for money. So instead of holding a balance on my credit card and then having to pay interest, I use it as if it's a debit card. I use it and then I pay it off. But I like to do that because it gives me rewards points that I can then exchange for money or I can just pay my credit card with those rewards points. Now I asked Google, how much does the average American spend on each of these things so that we can make some real life comparisons? Now, of course, everyone's situation is different. This is the average, but again, maybe this can give you some ideas on where you can save some money. So apparently the average person in America spends 1,792 per month on rent. Now I live with my boyfriend, so we split rent. So I definitely pay way less than this. It's a little more than half of this. Apparently the average American spends 894 per month on a car. I don't have a car. I walk, I have a kick scooter, and I take public transit, which is way cheaper than having a car. Now I understand, depending on where you live, maybe you need a car for your job. I get it. Maybe there's a different way. Maybe you can carpool. Maybe there is public transportation. Maybe you can get like an electric bike. Apparently the average American spends $150 to $438 per month on food. I spend, I think it's around 200 on food. I recently made drastic changes to my diet, so I'm actually saving a lot of money. So I used to go to the farmer's market every single week, spend two hours going to the farmer's market by the train, and I would buy all sorts of vegetables and fruits and meat and eggs. Now, <laughs> I don't eat any plants, I just eat meat, I eat beef, butter and eggs, water and salt, that's it. <laughs> and I've seen good results so far, so I'm gonna keep doing it. I'm also saving money. I feel more satiated, I feel more full, I don't have the, I don't overeat, I don't binge, I don't have the munchies. And back then when I, when I was eating heavily on plants, no matter how much I ate, I always felt hungry. So then I would eat more and then therefore spend more. I was buying like nuts and seeds. Those are expensive. <laughs> They're like almost the same price as a pound of ground beef. And I'm not going to the farmer's market every week. So I'm saving money and I'm saving time. Apparently the average woman spends $54 per hair trip salon and guys spend around $23. So I cut my hair at home. So, I mean, I've been doing that since maybe 2008. So I've saved <laughs> how much money every month or every two months instead of going to the salon to get my hair cut, I just do it at home. Takes about 10, 15 minutes. So think about the time that you're also saving, not actually going to the salon, waiting for your appointment, and then sitting there in the chair, getting the appointment, you know, getting your hair done. Phones, new one comes out every year and it's about a thousand bucks. I've been using the same phone since 2017. This is the iPhone SE. They don't, I don't even think they make this phone anymore. So I've saved thousand bucks every year by not buying a new phone. It still works and you know, I text and I call, that's all I really need to do on it. And for my phone bill, I only spend 10 bucks a month. So I don't have a big data plan. I think I have like one gigabyte per month that I can use, but I don't need it. I text with iMessage with Wi-Fi, and then I call and that comes with every plan. I don't need, I don't need data for that. So yeah, 10 bucks a month versus what the average American spends, $114 per month. So I'm saving $104 per month on the phone plan. Apparently the average American spends $120 per month on clothes. I think the last time I bought clothes was last April, so almost a year ago. I don't know if you can tell from my videos, but I <laughs> wear the same thing in every video. It's not because I shoot all of them all in one day, it's because I just wear the same thing every day. Apparently the average American spends $30 on cat food per month and I save that because I get Jericho's food for free. Like I said, I use those rewards points, those discount points, and I'm able to get his food for free. I make my own lip balm, I make my own deodorant. I don't really know how much people spend on that. I mean, that's a cost that most people have every month. So the total that each American spends on average is $3,154 per month. And I use the lower end of the cost of food for that amount. 
and what I spend is about $1,169. So I'm saving $1,985 per month compared to the average American. Now, maybe some of you are thinking, well, I already do all of those things. I already don't have a car. I already make my own deodorant. I already cut my own hair. I don't spend a lot of money on food. Maybe you're already not spending money on all of these things that the average American spends money on. So what's the other solution? Make more money. Now it's way easier said than done. I completely understand it. But if you're watching this video, you have some kind of a smartphone because majority of traffic comes from a mobile device. So you have something that you can record yourself on and you also have the internet because you're watching this video. So you already have everything that you need to build a business online. Again, I know it's easier said than done and I know it's going to take work, but you gotta work if you wanna make money, right? So I started my business in December of 2019 and I started with a website. And at the time I was cat sitting and dog walking. So I had two jobs and some days I would have 13 clients in a day. So that's half an hour visit and average half an hour travel between visits. Sometimes the travel was a 10 minute walk. Sometimes it was an hour and a half train and bus ride. Sometimes I had to take a train and two buses just to get to the visit. So I was busy to say the least. So I would wake up typically around five or six, out the door half an hour later, then would have a break around noon because my visits were a.m. and p.m. So I'd have a break around noon, I would get right to work on my website. You know, spend time with Jericho and then go on my website. Leave around three and then get home around 9 p.m. and then take a shower, go right to bed. Next day, do it all over again. Any free time that I had, I dedicated to my website. A lot of people ask, like, oh, it's too, is it too late? It's only too late if you keep pushing it off. I personally think that building an online business is way easier, especially now with all of these different platforms and the internet. Work on it in your free time when you have the free time because, again, we're focusing on long-term savings and not short-term savings. So, yeah, you're dedicating a lot of your time and energy to it, but you're investing in your future, you're investing in that long term because the more years you have of your online business, the more money you're going to make. Basically, all it comes down to is, are you entertaining people or are you helping them solve their problems? Ideally, you would do both because you know you wanna be entertaining. So if you have a skill, if you have something that you know how to do, that other people wanna know how to do, you can make money online. And some of you are older, I get it, technology, you know, maybe you aren't so strong in it, but there are plenty of people that are in the older years that are doing stuff online. Like there's this guy that gets some, a bunch of food and eats a bunch of food and does ASMR. He's older and he's got millions of subscribers, millions of views on his video. There's another guy that cooks completely outside. I think he's in Texas, he's older. He gets millions of views, he gets millions of subscribers. There's a channel called Dad How Do I? And he teaches people how to clear your drain, you know, how to fix this, how to do that. So really there are so many different ideas that you can do and there are so many different ways that you can help people online. And it's really fun and it's rewarding and it can also be your business. Check out this video right over Mia if you wanna see more details about how I make money online. Thank you so much for watching.